Hi, I'm going to show you a little bit about how to use WebAssign. If you've never used WebAssign before, you're going to have to click this gray button here, which reads Enter Class Key. And when you click it, you're going to go to another page, which instructs you to enter the key, which is a number that you get from your instructor. In my class, that number is in your syllabus and posted online for you. If you've already registered for the class, then you simply click Log In, and click your username, your institution, which for us is LWTC, and your password. And you click Log So we're previewing this assignment now, and I want to point out a few things to you. This one shows the question number that we're on, and how many points we've received, and how many points total for the whole assignment that we've received so far. Note also that the instructions I told you about earlier appear here. Let's look at number one. This is a simple problem. You won't see these green boxes with, that indicate the correct answer in your version, but you will see this red text. The red text indicates that you are uh, getting this answer is a randomized value that not every student sees. And let's exercise this a little bit and see what happens. I'm going to leave the first, give the first one the correct answer, the second one the incorrect answer, and then the third one I'm going to leave blank. Now, <clears throat> uh, in order to evaluate whether this is correct or incorrect, we'll go down and click a button at the bottom which is called submit for testing. When you see this yourself you'll see another problem that reads just save. So it saves your selection but doesn't submit for testing so it'll be graded now. And because I didn't answer the third problem it's going to count it as incorrect. It won't do that if you click save but it will do it if you count as, in, as uh, if you submit for testing. So first one we got correct and it indicates this with this green check mark. Second one is incorrect so we get a red X and the third one since we didn't answer it's also incorrect. So let's go and correct these <coughs> excuse me and then we'll look at this answer here we'll see we got 0.41 out of 1.25 points and we've only done one problem so far. Now notice that the other ones aren't counted can't see that yet as um, against this. They don't count as a turn of taking it. If you see a red X here it doesn't mean anything to you because you can actually go back up to five times and still submit answers here. So it's okay to click submit, submit on each and every problem. Don't worry if you see this red X here because you still have five chances to answer this problem. So I'm going to go ahead and click down here, submit for testing again. And we will see we got all the points for this problem. So that's good. And that's a, a radio button selection problem. So if I go down and I check another type of problem. Let's see. I want to get one with um, some significant figures associated with it. So if you see this this checkbox right here, this 4.0 with a blue check mark checkbox, that tells you that you have to be aware of how precise exactly how well you enter the answer. So for example, this one reads 2e to the 0, 09. That means 2 times 10 to the ninth power. E is means exponent or times 10 to the... So let, let's try this one out a little bit. If I type uh, 2 uh, e, or let's say 2.00 e plus 0, 09, let's see if that's correct or not. And this one reads 48,000 picograms. And let's submit that for number 11 here. And we go submit for testing. And let's look at what we got. Number 11 is going to 0.94 out of 1.25. That's not good. So we'll look down here and see. And we got this one. This little slash here means that you got it partially correct. You got partial credit for it. Because, and it says check the number of significant figures. You didn't quite get it right. You were only allowed one significant figure because it has one here in the answer given to you. But you put three in the answer. So, um, so that's a problem. This one is actually correct. Um, so it might you might be confused to say, oh, this one has two. Why does this not have two? Well, you can click on this red, this I'm sorry, this blue box, and it will explain the rules for significant figures for you, and you'll see them here. And this one is correct because zeros at the end of an answer when a decimal point is specified are significant. That's the important part that you want to see. This one has a decimal point here, so this has three significant figures in this 500, and this one has a 500 without a decimal point, so that's one significant figure, and so. This, the way that WebAssign works is that you um, can, well, I'll explain the significant figures part to you later, but 
the part that you want to pay attention to here is that this one was maybe correct in your mind but isn't correct with the way it's reported and that's important so we're going to change this to two and then we're going to resubmit the problem and see all these all of these ones that you see the blue check marks on the, the little four they're all checking for significant figures so you have to get those correct with the num number of digits that you're reporting so i'm going to submit for testing and what do you know we got them all right because i'm giving you a few chances to get it correct and that is, those are the fundamentals of how you use WebAssign. When you first open an assignment, you notice that some of the, there's some material at the top that might be important to you. For example, this one reads chapter one, matter and measurements. You want to make sure you're on the right chapter, right assignment. And there'll be some instructions, instructions from me, your instructor here. Don't forget to read these because there's can be some important stuff to help clarify some problems that you're likely to run into. Your interface will look a little different than mine because I have the teacher's view and you'll have a student view but it's overall largely the same. Some of the things to note are that this this code here tells you what chapter and page uh, this problem is found on. The answer to this problem is found on in the original textbook which is version 5 of this book and you're using version 7. Uh, it tells you how long the average person takes to complete this problem and how many points it's worth here. Those are some things that uh, you might be interested in. I'm going to go ahead and um, preview this assignment and go over it with you a little bit.